Advice number two, your money couldn't be spent on a worthier cause. Before you make the decision to embark on Hajj, and as you make that bank transfer, or you pay it in cash, and even after you do so, shaitan will be whispering. Now, look, put aside the exploitation of governments or their likes. I'm speaking to you and about you as a financer of your hajj. Every penny you spend will be compensated by Allah and will be seen in dunya before the hereafter. So allow your heart to rest. Believe me, success isn't about returning home from hajj and, and priding yourself about how you only spent such and such small amount of money for the duration of the travel. That's nothing to show off about. This journey isn't about saving money. It's about spending on your hereafter, investing in your akhirah. And I mention this because of the questions that pilgrims pose indicate a very different motive, an eager desire to save. I'll give you an example. A brother will say, um, I want to do both Umrah and Hajj. So you say, okay, so do the tamattu' format of Hajj or Qiran. You do Hajj and Umrah together. They're included. He says, no, I want to do Umrah after Hajj. You say, how come? He says, because of the Hadi, the sacrificial animal. He's trying to avoid paying for it. That's not the mentality of someone who wishes to ransom himself from hell and earn the love of Allah. Now consider with me three sentences from Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, ayah 272. Think about it and keep them before your very eyes in the face of every opportunity in Mecca to spend on your hereafter. Profound verse. First sentence. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ Whatever good you spend, it is for yourselves, Allah said. So whether it's small or large, you're actually treating yourself. And so make an effort in being kind to yourself by spending, giving sadaqah. Whatever you good, you spend, it's for yourselves. Sentence number two. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بَتِغَاءَ وَجِهِ اللَّهِ And you do not spend but to seek the pleasure of Allah. So don't wait for people to offer you thanks and express appreciation. That does not matter. It's his face you desire when you spend. Sentence number three. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ And whatever good you spend shall be paid back to you in full and you shall not be wronged. Allahu Akbar, look at the reassurance given to you from Allah, the most rich. Who knows just how much reassurances we stingy human beings need. All what you spend will find its way back to you. And the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's Hajj was the Qiran format. Other scholars have said it was in fact the Ifrad format, Hajj by itself. Now even if we were to work with the second opinion, he wasn't obligated to give any sacrificial animals. Despite that, he sacrificed how many? 100 camels. Now does, does our behavior reflect this? Or do we search through the list of sacrificial animals till we arrive at the very cheapest option? Don't let that be your ethic in Hajj. That's advice number two.